Hello, the Digital Journey community. It's great to be back. I know we've missed a couple of weeks of episodes. A lot of illness is going around, a lot of rescheduling, and a lot of end of year planning, but we are happy to be back and diving into another episode. We have a great guest for you today, a really intriguing and popular topic nowadays, and a bunch of new guests lined up for the new year to maintain our bi weekly episode. So we are really excited to keep bringing you real experiences from real operators. And with that, as always, let me bring in my right-hand man and co-host, Brandon. Brandon, how is everything? It's great to be oh, back. Oh, dude, it's going, it's going fantastic. It is good to be back. We've both been like swamped, swimming, treading in water, you know, doing all types of stuff. And uh, I was so fired up when I, when I looked at the pre-notes um, for the session for tonight. And I was like, this is a technology that is like the adoption rate of this technology that we're going to go over tonight is one of the fastest in any market segment, man. I'm, I'm just, I'm going to try to contain myself tonight, Brian. I'm, I'm going to try to contain myself when Andrew gets on here and just stay on point with the questions that we have for him because I can go off in the weeds. So I won't do that to you tonight. I promise. <laughs> it's no problem. Like you said, we have a really great topic tonight, a very special guest and a really fast growing, innovative and collaborative organization. So we're very excited to dive into it. Tonight's episode is going to be focused specifically on how technology fosters human connection. And without further ado, let me introduce you to us, our special guest for tonight, Andrew Horn, co-founder and CEO of Tribute. Hey, Andrew, how are you doing tonight? Thanks for coming on. Thanks so much for having me. Excited to be here. Likewise, it's a pleasure to have you on. And we're really excited to dive in, you know, to your journey in particular. And of course, the road that Tribute's been on as well. Um, as you know, we'll dive in deep into, you know, the journey of Tribute as we get deeper. But it would be great, you know, just to start people off with a little taste of what Tribute is and, and what's the main goal and mission of the company. Yeah, absolutely. So the easiest way to explain what a tribute is, is to tell a quick backstory of how it all started. And uh, that was almost seven years ago now on my 27th birthday. So my <laughs> wife takes me out for a, a birthday dinner at Fada, our favorite little French cafe down the street from us in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, where we used to live. Now I'm in uh, sunny Austin, Texas. But um, so we go out to dinner, we come back to my apartment. I think that we're just going to have a quiet night. The two of us, I swing the door open. I look down and I see 20 random pairs of shoes on the ground. And then I hear a countdown, three, two, one. And all my friends jump out from closets and from the bathroom and they're all there to surprise me. So my wife planned this uh, surprise birthday party for me. So uh, we're all hanging out, having a grand time. And then halfway through the party, she's like, all right, everyone in the living room. So she gets everyone to the living room, puts everyone on the couch. She has this projection screen in the back of the room and she hits play. And what I didn't know is that uh, over the past couple of weeks, my wife had reached out to 20 of my closest friends and family members. She asked each of them to submit a one minute video telling me why they love me or how it impacted their life. So she reached out, she got all these videos, she put them into this video montage and she hits play. So there I sit as my dad comes onto the screen and talks about how much he loves me. And I know my dad loves me, but he doesn't say those words, I love you that often. So it was really a meaningful way to start. And then next up is my mom, who's telling me how grateful she is to me for starting her business with her. Next up is my best friend, Matt, who tells me that I'm his best friend for the first time, which as an adult man, it's a pretty special thing to get a best friend for someone to say that, you know, it's very meaningful. And it was in that moment that I was just so overwhelmed with the love of, of my tribe, of my community, that I, I started to cry. I, was, I just was, was broken open by the experience. And I did that for the next 20 minutes. And I gave my friends a hug after it was done. And then I went right up to my girlfriend at the time, now wife, and I said, this is the best gift I've ever received. How did you do this? And without blinking an eye, she looks back at me and she says, well, it really sucked. <laughs> like, what, what do you mean? And she says... Well, it took me literally 20 hours of emailing people hundreds of times to get their video in. I'm collecting files through Dropbox and Drive and text message. I'm editing everything together in iMovie. And so it was right then and there where I realized that this was the most powerful gift I'd ever received. And the only reason that more people don't get this is because of how difficult it is to put together. So I walked into my bedroom. I took a minute away from everyone. Within a minute, I had the name. This is a tribute video. This is what this is. Quick Google search. I've been an entrepreneur for several years, started several nonprofits and an agency before that, and just did a quick old, I call it GTS, Google that shit. And I <laughs> it, collaborative video montage, group video montage, and there was nothing. 
And I was like, this makes no sense. It's like, you know, so much of the battle of entrepreneurship is product market fit. It's building something that people want. And I knew that I just experienced this. I see how hard it is. I had seen other people create these group video montages and knew how hard it was. And so right then and there, Tribute was born. And our simple mission was really to create technology that makes it easy for people to give what we call the most meaningful gift on earth, a group video montage of friends, family, coworkers, telling someone why they appreciate them, why they love them. And you know, beneath the technology, our real mission is all about spreading gratitude and human connection in the world. And I'm so excited to be able to, to join the two of you tonight to talk about human connection because uh, you know, in a, a very divided world, like uh, Pew studies show that we're, we're 20 times more polarized than we were 10 years ago, 40% more than uh, 20 years ago, that loneliness is on the rise. 50% of millennials identify as lonely. The average number of picnics is on the decline. So the world <laughs> needs human connection right now more than ever. And uh, I think that technology, when done with intention, is a really powerful conduit to do just that. Certainly. And I think the picnic statistics, the one that stands out the most. Right. <laughs> uh, but no, in all seriousness, Andrew, it's great to have you on. Uh, it's great to hear that inception story. I think I've heard pieces of it in the past, but never, never the whole thing. So that's great. And it's always you know, great when a moment like that comes so naturally. All right. And it, it builds that feeling in your gut that then there's nothing else you can do but pursue it. Uh, and it's a very exciting time. And, you know, a lot of people that follow the podcast, I'm sure, have, have felt a very similar way. And like they say, the idea is the easy part. Right? And then all the hard work starts. <laughs> so it'd be great, Andrew. I know you alluded to there a little bit. Right. Of course, you had a background, you know, before tribute. Right. And kind of a combination of experiences that led to that moment and also gave you, you know, the ability to see how you could execute upon it. Right. So uh, I'd love just to take a few steps back and just gain a little bit of a deeper insight into, you know, what were some of the key moments in your journey or, you know, different roles that you had companies you started before tribute and how do you think those have kind of, you know, compounded into the experience that you've created within tribute today? Yeah, you know, I, I definitely consider myself a social entrepreneur and it was entrepreneurship that really kind of rocked me out of a, a real kind of lull in my life where I lacked a, a great deal of purpose or clarity about what I wanted to do. You know, coming out of college, I thought I was going to be a nightlife promoter. I've been doing that for many years and was making money and having fun, but lacked any real semblance of fulfillment uh, in my life or, or kind of personal belief and conviction about who I was and how I was contributing. And so um, I got introduced to an organization called Dreams for Kids when I was a junior in college. They do adaptive athletic sports for young people with disabilities. And uh, through my volunteering experiences with that organization, I really connected to the power of service and, you know, truly, you know, to help ourselves. The, the most efficient way to do that is oftentimes just to help others. And so, uh, so right out of college, I ended up starting um, one of the first adaptive athletic organizations focusing on large scale events for youth with disabilities in the Metro DC area and ended up over two years, you know, through trial and error, growing that into one of the premier adaptive providers in the city, which still more than 10 years later is, you know, helping thousands upon thousands of kids a year to access sports that they've never played before, engage in consistent community-based uh, athletic opportunities. And so that was my, my first ever uh, organization was uh, something called Dreams for Kids DC. And then I, I took my knowledge there one of my, my foremost mentors, who I still remember this advice to this day, but he said, um, he asked me a question rather, which is usually how the best advice is given. And he said, um, are you satisfying your need to give or are you satisfying the greatest need? And it was an idea of like, I knew that it felt good to offer these programs, adaptive athletics to people who didn't always have access to them. But that idea of being a a contributor, an entrepreneur, like asking the question of like, what is what is the greatest need? And how can we support that? And not just our need to give, um, you know, to find personal meaning, but how can we solve the, the biggest need that's going to impact the most people? And so what we ended up doing is starting a, a nonprofit technology company called Ability List, which was like a modernized Craigslist for people with disabilities that uh, pools resources that are available in a town and makes them more available to underprivileged communities who oftentimes don't know what's out there. So it's really just increasing capacity for all of, we call them uh, DRPs, disability resource providers uh, in a given locality. And so found two co-founders, built that up. And then when Tribute came around, uh, it was something that became so clear to me was kind of like my, my dharma, if you will, like the thing that I really des like deserved all of my attention that I gave ability list to two of my co-founders and 
uh, went full time with Tribute. And so those are the two companies that I did uh, between that and uh, kind of sprinkled into the the on all of that is this this foundational kind of background in strategic communication training. My mother, Sam Horn, is the founder of uh, the Hawaii Writers Conference. She's written uh, eight books on communication, Tung Fu, Pop, endorsed by Tony Robbins, Seth Godin, uh, Seth Godin, and really is a master of helping people to articulate the value of what they do in really short, concise, pithy packages. And so, you know, I think that that would be probably kind of like one of the tools that's sharpest in my own toolkit is just how do we communicate what it is that we're doing, both internally, externally, and that's been I think foundational to my success in the nonprofit and the for-profit world. No, that's amazing. I think, you know, that's such a key thing to put on, right, is the communication because whether it's, you know, like the tribute side of things where you're communicating all these feelings and that's what makes it so emotional. It makes you feel like you have a deeper sense of even somebody that you have a great relationship, right? When you hear it in their words from the way that they see your relationship, it connects with you deeply. And also communication is, a huge factor in the early days of a company, right? There's a lot to do. There's a lot of people to get on board. And more importantly, you have to give everybody that lighthouse, right? That they can head towards and communicate clear enough where they understand your vision and can head towards it, but they can also, you know, bring their own creativity into that process. So I think that was just a great thing to touch on, Andrew. And I know, Brandon, we've spoken about, you know, just the importance of communication, how to build teams early on. Uh, and it's a reoccurring topic that many can have challenges with, you know, in the early days of their business. Um, so it seems like, uh, Andrew, like many, right, you taking the combination of these experiences and then fortunate enough, right, you had that aha moment where you kind of had all that years of experience, the previous companies you built and, and finally found the area, right, where you could focus all of your attention into. And of course, you know, that is what attributes become today. So we're really excited, you know, to have you on and dive deeper into the topic. I think before we, you know, focus specifically on how does technology foster human connection, uh, a key focus, an area to discuss is, you know, why as humans do we feel, you know, this overall need of connection? Why are we drawn to others with similar or opposing ideals? And, you know, what is the whole premise of friendships outside of becoming good friends with the person you grew up next to, right? Um, so I'd love to take a, a deeper dive into that and, you know, get your initial thoughts on, you know, we have the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? There's a lot of different psychological um, diagrams of behaviors that have looked into this, but I'm really curious as to, you know, what you've learned through your experiences and, and how you've seen, you know, why humans need to connect to one another and, and what it results in for us. Yeah, I mean, so, you know, rather than even talking about my own anecdotal experience, that uh, we've, we've actually done extensive research about human connection and why it matters. And, and one of my favorite studies on the subject is, comes from a guy named Harvey Waldinger, who he ran the longest longitudinal study of happiness ever conducted at Harvard University. And so what they did is they uh, created a, a test uh, pool of young men who were seven years old. And what they would do is that they would evaluate those men every single five years, all the way up until they were 70. And so and they had all of these qualitative measurements of uh, subjective well-being, life satisfaction, psychological well-being, and uh, measures of happiness. And I'll always remember, I even get goosebumps when I talk about it, actually, because he gave a, a really uh, famous, one of the most popular TED Talks on the subject. And um, if you go, the description underneath it just says, um, you know, when we look at the, the research from 70 years of study, one, thing's become, one thing becomes abundantly clear. Um, great relationships are the magnifier of joy the magnifier of happiness, that if they looked at the single thing that led to these people having a, a, a joyful, happy life, it was the quality of their relationships. And so if you look at the longest longitudinal study, you know, to just say that the, the greatest uh, contributor to your long-term subjective well-being and happiness is going to be the quality of your relationships. And I've always loved that one. And uh, Brene Brown has a great uh, quote about like, what is connection? And it roughly says that um, she views human connection as the energy that flows between people when they feel seen, heard, and accepted, when they can give and receive energy and feel safe in that connection. And, um, you know, I think that so much of, of human connection is that part of feeling seen and heard, being reflected, 
Like if I'm not talking to someone else <laughs> that is very core, like we don't necessarily exist unless there's someone to reflect us, right? And so if we're just in a vacuum, who's who's to say that there's any us at all? And so um, so I think that, you know, there's been a lot of research that talks about the, the essential nature of quality relationships. And, um, and so that's why we see them as so important as we think that, uh, you know, people are, are much more likely to express pro-social behaviors when they have greater relationships. So it's, you know, literally people who are taking part in behaviors that we identify as pro-social, voting, community service, higher education, these things all go up when people have more and better relationships. So it is this fundamental thing that if you are engaging in an act, in a service, in a product that is fostering more better relationships in the planet, the, the ripple effect of that good is, is deeply felt in communities and on a societal level. And, and we're really, you know, in addition to being technologists, trying to be an advocate for the importance of uh, what oftentimes is called connect tech, right? Like technology that's actually connecting people in ways that are meaningful to the users and not necessarily just to the companies. Correct. Yeah, no. And I, and I love, you know, the way that you said it, you know, it's more like an energy, right? Uh, one of the favorite quotes that I loved around connection is it's not an exchange of information, you know, it's an exchange of humanity and emotion, which is energy, you know, in the undertones of it. And, and that's what you really feel, right? When you go to that event for the first time, you meet a random person out of nowhere, you just hit it off, right? On certain topics and you feel, you know, happy now to keep going through that event and hopefully find, you know, more moments like that. Um, so I couldn't agree more. And obviously, Brandon, um, you know, from your side, right? Uh, we've all fostered a lot of human connections, but I know obviously you also have, you know, some children running around. I'm not exactly there yet. I'm just on the dog stage currently. Um, but I'm curious, you know, how have you seen in your life, you know, the need for human connection? And obviously, you know, from what I've heard, as you can see, children grow up, you see the way they connect friends and how it impacts to them. So, you know, where do you think our underlying need is, you know, just for overall connection? And, and how do you think it impacts our lives, you know, on the daily basis? I think just being genuine is what's most important. Gen uh, being sincere, genuine, understanding, you know, the core foundations, the core basic foundations. And um, I'm actually, I'm, I'm shocked at how deep you go, Andrew. That is really, uh, <laughs> it's, it's a very, very strong message. And I'm, um, I, you know, I came on, I want to talk about the tech stack and I still do. I, I'm still interested in that, but I, I'm so interested because when you were kind of sharing, you know, your, your, your mother at being an accomplished writer, you are basically doing, and she's the, the most successful people are the best storytellers. And we used to do that through writing, and we still do that in a large medium through writing. And we always will. It's one of the most powerful platforms. But currently, right now, I see we have three kids, a 22-year-old, an 18-year-old, and a 15-year-old. And the, the amount of video they consume on a daily basis is absolutely insane. And I know if I write them something, they're most likely not going to do it. But if I hold my <laughs> phone up and I shoot it, and I send it to them, they completely get it. So it's kind of like a, a transition. And, you know, the platform that Andrew has has created is really doing, giving people the ability to do great things and to share great messages, man. I, I'm not able to express that enough, man. I know we all go on the social channels today and stuff like that. And you look at people on jets and planes and riding camels and in the <laughs> back of the Egypt, like, dude, I've worked with companies that were doing $500 million a year. And they had seven people on the, on their marketing team, seven people of 15 of a 15 person marketing team working on similar projects that Andrew's tool can do for you in probably an hour. You know, took two or three weeks. So, um, you know, this is this is really, really strong, man. And and I, I I know I don't know Andrew personally, but I'm a big advocate already. So I don't want to steal any more thunder. I'll just be quiet and sit back. But, um, <laughs> well, yeah, I, I'm sure, you know, I, I, I appreciate the reflection. Man, and I think that it's um, business is, is much more than than dollars and cents for us. And it sounds like, you know, you're connected to that. So it means a lot to hear that. But 
I mean, that's, that's when we got off the call today. I looked at everyone on our team and I said, you know, like we are building a technology, but let us not forget like what we are opening up for our families and friends and it, making it easier to share the stuff that matters, the stuff that reaffirms our important relationships and helping our team to feel clear about like why that matters, why it's not just people feeling nice, but why that leads to long-term happiness while that leads to stronger communities, stronger governments. Like it's, uh, you know, I think that the business, the when done right is one of the most powerful forces for good uh, on the planet. And, um, and so while I, I love talking about business, you know, to us, I think business is also a, a conduit directly for, for impact. And so they're all tied in together. Yeah. And coming from Brooklyn, how did you feel moving to Austin? Because I know Brooklyn is a tight knit community. Like you're, it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's a brotherhood. It's a sisterhood there. You know, it's, it's very tight. When you moved to Austin, did you kind of miss, and I know Austin's fantastic too, but did, did you use your own platform to connect with people <laughs> back at home or did they use your own platform to connect with you while you're away? Because anytime you move, it's difficult, you know? So I'm just wondering how, how you transitioned. Yeah, no, it's, it's a great question. I think that was one of the hardest things for my wife and I is we were both in a, in a position of craving more nature in our life. And my wife had been in New York for 20 years. I had been there for seven. And, um, so leaving our community was, was by far the hardest decision of that. But we also kind of wanted to do that intentionally and confront the challenge of it to see how we could build community again. Because we had such an established built-in network of people in New York who are so packed together because it's just the nature of a big city <laughs> like that, that one of the challenges that we were excited about is what does it look like to intentionally build community in a new city? And Austin is just thriving right now. There's There's more new people who are building cool companies who are coming in every single day. And it's really remarkable to be here. And so that was part of the, the challenge of it and the allure of it to, to build community again. And, and we've been really intentionally doing that over the past year of, you know, how do we, how do we want to build gatherings that allow for people to connect on a deeper level? Like how do we build things at our house, like a pickleball court that allow people to come over and play <laughs> together more frequently. And so, uh, so that's been a big part of our, of our last year. And, when I look back, um, I'm in a, a weekly men's group with some guys and, and we always look back in our last session of the, the year, which was this this past month, this Monday, yesterday. And one of the, the things that was most exciting this past year was all the new friendships. And, you know, I think that we talk about the importance of relationships, but at the end of the day, you know, if I look at all the cool stuff that's happened in the past year, but saying that I have six new great guy friends. Like that's a crowning achievement of the past year. Like to live in a new place and to have six new friends is, is amazing. And I'm so happy that I, you know, am aware of that and know to invest my energy there because at the end of the day, my company could be doing great. And um, if I don't, if I don't have meaningful friendship or community, um, it's going to be hard to be living the kind of life that I want to live for myself. So, yeah. For sure. I just have one more quick thing, Brian. And then, okay. but do you find, and then you can kind of um, keep, keep going, but uh I just want to express this to everybody that's watching this, that's going to watch this, or that's that's going to listen to this. This plan, all of us, Brian on here, myself on here, Andrew on here, I think we can all agree that our plan perhaps was not um, directly set, but we were all in action when we put ourselves and started walking in action. Some of us went to the left, some of us went to the right. But through action and, and um, commitment and dedication, I think we all ended up exactly where we're supposed to be. But I just talk for myself here in my life. If I never put the left foot in front of the right and took that first initial action, there is no way that I was ever going to mess up the 10 times that I messed up and got the success that I got and then messed up and got the success unless I was dedicated to action, man. You know, and, and, it's, and it has to do with a, a just – it, it has to do with being a positive person and just knowing and realizing not, not everything in life that you touch is going to, is going to um, turn to gold. Although everyone will make you believe that it is, it's not, it's going to be hard. It's going to be tough. It's going to be, whatever you think it is, it's going to be 10 times hard, a hundred times harder. I, I would say it's going to pull on every whim. You're going to want to quit. You're going to want to just end but don't, man, because maybe that one thing won't work out for you. But I can tell you when one thing doesn't work out, 
I hear it all the time. 10 things open up or one thing opens up or it opens up some part of your brain that says, hey, man, I ought to be doing this. And that's the exact point, man. Hang around people doing the right things. And I'm sure your girlfriend at that time, Andrew, was doing the right thing and so forth. And she, when she put that montage together, she didn't know that it was going to form this business, and no, no, nor did you. But you were in the right mindset to do it. And all of your past experiences just allowed you to GTS this thing and just <laughs> freaking go forward. You know what I'm saying? I'm not talking for you, but I just that's kind of what I'm hearing. And that's similar to my story, and I think it's similar to Brian's as well, just in talking to him all the time. But um, so anyway, that's enough for me, man. That's your golden <laughs> nugget for today. I'm going to go back to sleep. <laughs> No, there you go. But I think it's it's really true, right? I think everything that we're alluding to and what's often not recognized is that connections and communication are the foundation of everything, right? The communities that we're in, the sports that we play, the colleges we went to, and the technology that we try to use are all just vehicles, you know, to further foster those connections and, and build new connections. But at the end of the day, that that's all they are, right? They're just vehicles, technologies not going to solve a human communication problem or a connection problem, but it can be a vehicle to foster more relationships and improve communication. Um, so Andrew, I know we were talking, you know, a little on the side before, and we dove into a, an interesting topic that I just want to make sure we cover a bit more before we dive into, you know, how does technology play a role in all of this? Totally. Um, and we pretty much were discussing, you know, around the human connection, right? There was more of the internal needs versus the external needs and kind of, the duality between those um, of how people focus on their connections. So I was hoping you wouldn't mind just diving a bit deeper into that side of things and, and bringing some more clarity there for the audience before we dove into, you know, how technology companies are trying to drive our connections. So this is about, so Reef, can I make sure I got the question right? Can you say it one more time? Yes. Yeah. So previously, uh, I think like offline, we were speaking right around more human connection kind of has two elements to it, right? The internal uh, and the external um, of those needs and kind of the duality of how we balance them both for ourselves and, and in our relationships. So when you say internal connection, what do you mean? Um, I think when we were talking more about it, it was, you know, when we look at human connection on how like I aim to connect with yeah. people, right? We have more of like our view and and how we're looking to connect oh, with them okay. and then, you know, the yeah. external world of how they're perceiving our attempt to to connect. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, oftentimes like what I when I think of communication, I really think of communication as the foundation of of how we connect. And so I think that um you know, so often we think about uh, connection as kind of these moments where we're in the midst of a room at a, a networking event or uh, a social gathering and we're having conversation and all this stuff is happening there. And it's kind of an external action. Uh, but what oftentimes what no one ever really supports us with is helping us to understand the, the internal elements of, of connecting with other people. And that's really understanding, like, how do we relate to the act of connecting in and of itself? Like, what are our values as it relates to friendship, as it relates to human connection? If you think about kind of like the lifeblood of like what runs an organization, what dictates the way that people behave within a company, it's their corporate values, right? Like, what are the values of this company? How do we operate here? And so a lot of the things that I oftentimes think about when it comes to connection is like, what are our social values, right? It's so when I think about like how important is is friendship to me. It's how do I prioritize family? Um, when I'm communicating with people, like what are my values? Like for me, it's it's authenticity, it's uh, curiosity, it's intentionality, it's kindness. And so I think that um, I've created this, this whole manifesto called Social Flow, which is uh, a book that's actually coming out next year, which is very fun, but it's, uh, it's based on this simple four question framework that anyone can use to bring more of their intrinsic excitement and authentic selves into conversation. And so I'll just, I'll give it to you real quick and you can try it before, you know, a lot of us are getting ready for holiday parties or uh, new year's gatherings, whatever that might be. And so uh, it's called social flow because it's how to manifest a flow state in a social situation. And all of us have experienced a flow state before. It's that moment where uh, you're kind of like uh, hypercritical dialogue melts away. You get completely absorbed into the thing that you're doing. Time moves slowly. You have increased energy to just get the thing done. And maybe it happens when you're playing sports or you're reading a book or you're watching a movie or whatever that thing that you just love for the sake of doing it. Um, and so how do we create those situations uh, that are so enjoyable and also 
um, effective, efficient when we're with people. And uh, one of the core uh, qualities of a flow state is something called intrinsic motivation, which basically means that I just lost your video. Are you still there? Oh. Yep, you're good. Yeah, we're still there. You're going full you're good. screen, man. It's all about you, Andrew. Keep going. <laughs> so so uh, is, is this idea of intrinsic motivation. Um, it's basically doing something for the sake of doing that thing because it's intrinsically enjoyable to you. And so one of the things that we can do to create social flow is to focus on our intrinsic motivation to be in conversation with people. And so the, the simple acronym that you can remember is I can, I C A N. And it's a 60 second practice that you can do before any important conversation that's going to ground you into your intrinsic motivation to be with that person. And the, the key, the, the core thing that triggers social anxiety is the uh, fear of being judged. It's when we're worried about how other people are perceiving us. It's like me in my head thinking about how Brian is receiving what I'm saying. When we're thinking about how we might be judged, we have less computational power to actually process and express ourselves clearly right? We get in the way of speaking and being powerfully in the world with other people. And so when we come back to ICANN, it stands for intentionality, curiosity, authenticity, now. So intentionality is just how do I want to be? So before I get on the podcast, I think, how do I want to be? Then I say, I want to be present. I want to be excited and I want to have fun. So present, excited, have fun. So now I'm focused on the energy that I want to bring into the room. So I have my intentionality for how I'm there. So then I can go to my curiosity. So oftentimes we're so focused on self and self-conscious rumination is actually, again, like one of the triggers of uh, anxiety. And so when we focus on our curiosity, what I want to know about the people I'm going to meet, we have less self-conscious rumination and less anxiety. We're more able to be present. We show ourselves we have something to contribute. So curiosity, just ask yourself, what do I want to know about the people that I'm going to meet? So if I'm going into a team meeting with my entire leadership staff, I'm, what was a highlight moment from this year? How did you grow personally? What was one of the favorite things that you shipped or delivered to a customer this year? So I've got all this curiosity. I know I can drive that conversation forward. And then authenticity is such a big one. So many of us have conditioned ourselves to, to think that we can't share authentically because it will be weird because people receive it in a, in a strange way. But really like the, the one thing it's like when people talk about presence, presence is just people's willingness to be themselves in front of others. And you think about like the celebrity or the actors like walking down the red carpet and they say, Oh, she has presence. It's because they just trust themselves. They trust whatever they feel in that moment and they let that go. And so uh, when we can talk about authenticity, which is what am I excited to contribute? What am I excited to share? And taking a moment to remind ourselves all that's real for us, all that we're excited about, we remind ourselves again that we have more to contribute and we can go into you know, social situations with a great deal more confidence. And then the last one is just uh, now, which is that when we can get out of our predictions of what's going to happen in the future, when we can come out of stories about the past or who we tell ourselves we think we are, and we just exist in the present moment, um, I, I can promise you this, that all of your most powerful communication and the meaningful connections that you're going to make are going to happen in the present moment. You are never going to connect with someone in a future moment. <laughs> Connection happens in the present. And so the more that we can allow ourselves to just be like, that is where the most powerful, confident, connected version of ourselves exists. And so, um, so that's how I think about the internal aspect of communication and connection that leads to external achievement, success and connection. Are you That's sure awesome. you're not a psychologist, man? <laughs> I, I, I know you're a technologist. Are you a psychologist? <laughs> if I wasn't a technologist, I would probably be a psychologist. <laughs> so it's a hybrid. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a hybrid fan. It's good. I'm, I'm, very, I'm very curious why people do what they do. And, uh, you know, and, I'm, and I, I think that the same way that uh, technology is a tool, I think of psychology as a tool right? It's a, it's a vehicle to help people do more of the things that are, are useful to them in their lives. And, you know, some tools are exist on a laptop and some of them exist in our brain, but they can be just as powerful and effective. Yeah. It's so funny. You were, you were just talking about that because I, it's the holiday times, obviously. And um, with the limited amount of holiday parties, you know, you always go to these parties that have high tops, you know, and the high tops and they're serving hors d'oeuvres and, and drinks or whatever else like that. And the conversation is always um, the conversation 
from non-experienced people, and I won't say it's bad or good or anything else like that, is, oh, the traffic was so bad here. Or, or oh, the, oh, what, 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 what about the weather? I actually came home and was doing a whole skit for, for my daughter, the 18-year-old, about what goes on at these things. And for me, I'm always like, do not ask the basic questions. I'm going over similar to your I can, um, you know, script that you do or, or the, 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 the actual steps that you do. You know, I'm going through, what do I want to find out tonight? Who do I want to meet? Who do I like? I have a specific agenda rather than just going in. I walk in like I own the room with presents. I look at the back wall. I look at somebody. I start waving to people. There's nobody even there, but nobody has eyes in the back of the head. So they can't even see. So, um, you know, I just want to share that real quick. Be the person in the room. Just 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 walk in and have an agenda, you know, a positive one, a genuine one, a sincere one to learn more about people, not just to to ask about the weather and the traffic and kids and here and there and nah, nah. it's like get to get to get beyond the topical stuff you know that's what people are dying for so much because anyone can talk about the topical stuff they want to talk about what's going on you know they they about emotions and stuff so I, I think about it as the golden rule of questions is ask the questions to others that you would like to be asked yourself yes exactly Exactly. Yeah. No, I love that. And always, uh, what's the other one? It's very out there. So I don't want to be corny, but it's, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, listen to understand, don't listen to respond. Cause I think, you know, often in, if it's a networking event or meeting with new employees or even an interview, you know, you have like, or even today, right. We have topics that we want to talk about. We have a general thing and flow that we want to make sure we deliver the value to the community, but you don't want to get so hung up on, you know, what you plan to do because you might miss all the nuances in the conversation that really lead to that, that deep connection. So yeah. um, thanks for understanding the question, Andrew, and bringing it back to our offline conversation. Cause I think Absolutely. that, you know, is a really deep concept that I just wanted to touch on. Cause I don't think a lot of people, you know, whether you want to say self-assess or just self-check, you know, sometimes you just got to take that moment to yourself and realize how good the day was, right? What new employee did you help onboard? What wins did they have? And and get out of, you know, the schedule mantra of just call to call, meeting to meeting and, and losing those small moments, you know, within the big picture. Mm -hmm. um, I think it happens all too often. And like you said, it, it just leads to feelings of not being fulfilled or feeling like no one's supporting you, right? Where you could have just talked five minutes, learned a new story of your coworker, and that would have been the memory you had of that day versus, you know, the ancillary tasks that that come with the, the job itself. Um, so that I think that's a really great segue, um, focusing on, you know, the foundation of where a lot of these beliefs from come from our need for connection and kind of our underlying perspectives of how we feel we're presenting ourselves and, and connect with others. So I think that can lead us right into Andrew. It's no secret. We have social platforms now, right? We have connecting platforms, sharing platforms, collaborating, uh, whether it's, you know, more on the social side or internal and in business, but at the end of the day, all of these are trying to either improve communication, right, or connection. And some would say they've done a great job and some would say they're starting to fall short in other areas. So starting at a really high level, not focusing on too many of the companies that are out there so far, but when you created Tribute, right, understanding the goal of Tribute, of course, that moment you had, right, that literally brought you to tears. I've been there myself. I'm not ashamed to admit it. Uh, when you get something, you know, that touching and meaningful, it's, it's very impactful. So when you first started creating Tribute, you know, what was your initial thoughts or planning with your team of how could you use technology to get that same feeling out to, you know, millions of people? Yeah. I mean, you know, we, we started in a very fortunate place, which was that I had a problem that I vis-a-vis -vis my girlfriend had experienced, which is that it took her 20 hours to create this video, <laughs> kind of manually stitching it together. So immediately I had a problem, right? I had a problem and I had something that was really meaningful to me. And so when we were starting this, this uh, company, it was very clear to us of the problem that we were trying to solve, which was how do we make it easy to create a group video montage that you can give as a gift? And when your problem statement is that cohesive and that clear, you oftentimes have a, a business behind it, right? It's like how many people were going to pay for that? Because in our early years, we were pretty early with Tribute. And it meant that, you know, we were doing several hundred thousand dollars in revenue, but we weren't doing millions. And so was there a business there? Yes, a small one initially, which then grew over time as people's 
uh, you know, behavior and, and attitudes towards video started to evolve with the times. But, um, but I think that the, the more entrepreneurs and, and great leaders that I, I listen to, you know, they just think about the importance of that one thing of how do you get to product market fit? And from the second that we had a working prototype in the world, we had people using it and crying tears of joy when they watched the end product. So we knew that we had something that people wanted. And so many of our challenges really were on the kind of like the acquisition and, and growth side of things. Um, but, but that was really the driving force was, um, was really, again, how do we solve a problem that, that's meaningful to us? Perfect. And I think, you know, what we're starting to see is, you know, Facebook, right? All these other social platforms that started off with a very similar mission. You know, a lot of people forget that Facebook started out as an on-campus networking tool. And then of course, blew out to be what it is today with all the acquisitions and new companies they have and new products, right? Um, but as we look at, you know, some of the modern social um, platforms, right? A lot of the current questions today come up with, you know, all the algorithms and everything that they built within the technology to help foster connections, right? Suggesting friends that went to the same high school, they know are near to you or connected with other friends or in similar communities, right? That all started out, you know, with the mantra to just spread and help you get more connections from people, you know, in a different time of your life, like you moved down to Austin. So now you can be connected with everybody in Brooklyn and still stay in touch. Right. But I think a lot of the leading questions and more popular topics today is, you know, as these technologies keep growing to scale, right? And there's only so much a technology can do because, of course, there's different algorithms for every different functionality that they want. Are they starting to have a negative impact on, you know, how our relationships are formed, how they're maintained, or how we perceive other people when it comes to, you know, presenting ourselves to them and already knowing in advance they may feel differently about a specific topic? Um, so I'm just curious from your view, you know, on where this technology is today, you know, how do you feel those platforms have maybe changed and are impacting our lives a little differently, you know, in the last year or so compared to maybe five to seven years ago when they first, you know, had their conception? Yeah, I think that it's a it's a really complex question. And we can start at the beginning, which is kind of my fundamental belief about most technology, although that starts to shift as we move into more exponential AI based algorithms that ultimately are uh, no less truly better than we know ourselves. And so, you know, whether a, a platform can truly stay uh, benevolent and aligned to its uh, customers when their platform is more knowledgeable about their customers and the customers themselves becomes very muddy. But uh, for the longest time, what I would say about Facebook is, um, you know, we talked about technology or psychology as a tool. And I, I look at Facebook as a platform and it is a tool. And there's research that shows that uh, for many users who are browsing Facebook or Instagram, that your subjective well-being will go down, uh, like basically kind of in um, connection with the amount of time you spend on the platform. So it's shown that you spend more time on Facebook, your subjective well-being is going to go down, uh, which I think most of us can, <laughs> can identify with, right? Most times when you're binging Instagram, you usually don't get off an hour and a half later and say, I'm really happy that I did that. <laughs> um, but um, there's also studies that have been done that talk about passive browsing, which is means there's, there's passive and then there's active browsing, not yeah, so there's passive and active. Passive is when you're just scrolling. Active is when you're actually going through content, you're liking, you're engaging, you're commenting, and that the experience of your subjective well-being can be completely and dramatically transformed simply by that one shift. If you're using the platform in a way that is conducive with, you know, like connecting with other people, uh, that you can have a, a better experience of that. And so uh, I would used to say that the platform is neither kind of like uh, bad nor good, what is important is our intentionality and, and what we bring to it. And while I do believe with most platforms that that is what is kind of most important and where the onus is on us is to use these things with intentionality. Um, I do think that there are some real issues with how advanced these platforms have become and just how addictive they are. And it's easy to look at people and to, to blame them for being lazy, to blame them for lacking the willpower to put down their phones. But the reality is that we are dealing with algorithms and machines that have become so finely tuned, not for helping you to connect with your friends, but purely to get you to click on the next thing that it is feeding us 
whatever is most inflammatory and addictive. And so this is where I think that uh, the intention of the, the platform, the, the builders of our digital universe become much more responsible is really identifying like what is the, the purpose of these companies? Like what are their values? What are their ethics? And why do they exist? And ultimately a company like Facebook, it's like they, they do not have a, a humanitarian, uh, you know, kind of like a mission at the end of the day. They may say that, but at the end of the day, like everything that they do has pretty much been shown that they're optimizing for clicks. They're optimizing for time on site. And, you know, I'm, I'm giving dollars, yeah. <laughs> a, a very rudimentary walkthrough of this, but someone who's really com- compelling and who's been on the front lines of, of this fight for a very long time is a guy named Tristan Harris, who started something called the Center for Humane Technology and is now one of the, the leading philosopher, philosophers on, on technology ethics. And so um, he was a, a design ethicist at Google and was funded by Google to dive into the, the kind of esoteric question of like, why, why are we here? Like not, not as humans, but as a company, like, why are we here? What's our purpose? And um, the more research that he put into that, he realized that really as a company, kind of like their modus operandi was just to continue to grow and kind of like optimize shareholder value um, at the, at the their very base. Like that was it. And that the ways that they did that were ultimately through tactics that were not in alignment with the benefit of their users. It was to benefit shareholders and the company. And so I think that that is uh, what is really challenging is where the uh, benefit is out of alignment between your shareholders, your stakeholders, and your users. Uh, Ultimately, things are going to get built that benefit the builders instead of the users and um, and that's why I think movements like Center for Humane Technology, where you have large technology companies that are committing to kind of like a series of uh, ethical design choices. Um, and then within the corporate world, you have people like Conscious Capitalism, which is kind of like a set of values and kind of ethical practices to align stakeholder and kind of like uh, customer values. So different movements like that, which are really important in these days of real exponential growth. Definitely. No. And, you know, I love what you said about intent, right? Because I think at the end of the day, it's, it's always easy to point a figure anywhere. Right. And, and like you said, there's the intent of the platforms. I really obviously believe in the early days of Facebook, right. A, a coder in his room, his intent was to build that connection, right. He had no idea. Sure. They didn't even have an advertisement model until they went public. Right. Um, so the, there's a lot of things. And then down that course that, that shift can kind of happen, right. Whether they realize their intent changed or, you know, now there's new responsibilities and different people involved and their intent is becoming part of that melting pot of the company's intent. Right. But I do love what you said, Andrew, was, you know, we also have to be conscious of our own intent the same way that we are when we're trying to have a conversation. Right. It should be that way when you go on Facebook. I mean, Facebook can be a great tool. Sometimes you're looking for a product. All you have to do is type it into Google, go to three websites and then wait to get hit by ads right? <laughs> for the next three days to find the product. Yeah. Uh, but it's clear on what that intent is. And I think, like you said, the more passive that we are, that's where we're not really being present. We're just letting things feed and accumulate in our minds. And we're not even reflecting upon, you know, what's coming across that screen at, at a given point in time. So, yeah. you know, like you said, I think you did a really good job. Don't want to go too deep into, you know, AI policies and bias and, and where the next uh, five to 10 years may be. But I think what a lot of people need to realize is that at the end of the day, these are tools. And again, if you use a tool for, you know, the function of why it's not there, it may not have the same benefits that it used to, right? Uh, Or to the degree that it used to. Uh, And I think that's just a direction that a lot of these companies are battling with. And, and, you know, to be fair, any company that reaches that size often has those challenges that they need to recalibrate, whether it's because your culture has grown so big, you know, you've gone from 50 employees to 2000, you know, you've got a lot more of a vision and and values to drive through uh, the entire culture. Um, so, you know, really just love the way that you, you separated those. And I think it makes it clearer for a lot of people that are trying to see these conversations that are going around the platform. And, you know, at the end of the day, all the parties involved bear some level of responsibility, right. Um, to make it better and bring it to that next level or, you know, choose not to use it if that's a particular outcome that they, they wish to have. Um, 
Brandon, kind of passing the same question over to you. You know, don't want to steal you know too many of the points that that we all went through. We might have made it harder, but uh, again, you know, you see your kids grow up. You were mentioning they're always you know on videos and things like that. So, you know, do you feel that for the younger age, you know, this digital layer of connection is just the new world, and and how a lot of them are going to build relationships or you know, how are you seeing it impacting your children's lives? And, and what do you think the future kind of has in store for us? I tell my kids exactly this. I'm like, <laughs> there, there are creators out there and there are watchers. And I want you to be creators. You know, I don't care what, what you create. If you use video as your platform to create, create. Don't be a watcher. 99% of people out there are watchers. They get their phone, they flick through, they watch, they watch, they watch other people, they watch other people, they watch other people. I'm like, stop watching, start doing. I don't care if you're raking leaves. I don't care if you're cutting the grass. I don't care what you're doing. Just do, stay in motion. But I think video is a big part of it. And I think tribute is, all, is an awesome way to gain entryway into becoming a creator, no matter how old you are. And if anything, it is so important because when you are that creator using tribute, and this isn't a commercial for tribute by, by, <laughs> by, by, by any means, they don't pay me to say this. Maybe one day they will, but here's the deal, man. By doing this, by, 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 by making a tribute, you're going to pull people together. When you pull people together, you are going to enrich every relationship that you reach out to. And just like Andrew said, when you enrich the relationships, you enrich your happiness. This is not rocket science, what I'm talking about here. Yes, we're talking about technology. Use technology as the fuel to get you to where you ultimately want to go. And you know, I'll just end with this is stop watching, start doing, be the creator. I don't care if one person watches. I tell my kids, I don't care if one person does it or, or zero do it or 10,000. To me, it doesn't matter. It matters that, that, that you're doing. And Tribute is a great platform to get in that mode. It's not easy to get started for a lot of people. So use the tools that are out there. Perfect. No, it makes a lot of sense. And, um, you know, Andrew kind of, you know, just shifting it back to Tribute, I think, Fortunately, we've, you know, touched on the journey and especially your mindset, you know, that went into the early stage of the, of the technology, right? But uh, on this channel, we're all about following people's digital journeys and, and really just creating awareness of the mindset that you should have around, you know, where technology is going, how it may benefit you. And there's no secret it can't solve all your problems. And it's always not going to be, you know, the choice solution, if you will. Um, but for those that are, you know, maybe running a manufacturing business, a product company, you know, like yourself, or just looking to enter, you know, a new career space, uh, we just like to ask all of our guests, you know, like, how do you view technology and, you know, this lovely word of digital transformation? And how would you kind of just paint your mindset on it for those that are trying to understand the opportunities, you know, that technology could bring to them? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's funny that we're, we're talking about connection because I, I think that again at least in my own experience one of the ways that I was able to embrace our own digital transformation has been associating myself and immersing myself in communities of other technologists and entrepreneurs that allow me to ask kind of more ambiguous questions about problems that I'm facing as an entrepreneur so that someone can then come in and introduce me to softwares and services that I would have no idea about right which is like hey does anyone know like a a really easy way to um, record and kind of encode like videos, which is like, and I don't understand even the word like encode when I asked that <laughs> 14, right? I just know that I need an easy way to record video from any device. And so I get to go to the Summit Series community. I get to go to, you know, my Maverick community. And I just ask that question where people say, it's like, oh, have you looked at like these two? And so I think that there are so many different communities with hundreds of thousands, millions of people that are available uh, on LinkedIn, on Facebook. Um, and those communities, I think, are so helpful in terms of just understanding what your problems are, being open to asking about it amidst people who've done that. And so um, so that's been a huge part of, of our own digital transformation and how I've tried to educate myself about other technologies that are available to, to build the things that I that I want to build. And um, you know, from a very early age when I was trying to make money when I was 21 and 
people wanted to build websites and I discovered uh, WordPress templates, which would essentially get me 95% of the way there. And I could customize some colors and a logo and give them to people. And they were stoked. And right. And it was just like, yep. do they need a, a, a one of one website as a consultant who serves people only in Santa Barbara, California? They don't really care. They just need something that they're proud to show their customers. And it talks about their brand. And so, you know, if I could do that, I just realized that like, I just, skipped so much of the work here about how to actually build websites and technology. And, and so that was always my mentality of that. There are so many tools available to make the path shorter. And if you don't need to build it yourself, you know, there's so many reasons not to. And um, that's one of the things that's allowed us to be much more nimble is plugging in with, with third party providers where we can. And there's certainly some things that we had to build ourselves because we were the first company who was doing collaborative video editing on the web, right? So it's like that 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 fundamentally did not exist before Tribute. And we had to build that from scratch. And that's where, where we needed to raise money initially, you know? But, um, but I would say asking questions to people, like helping to um, really make the language simpler of discovering technologies that can help your business is, is one of the simplest things that anyone can do. And putting yourself into communities is a great way to do that. Yeah, Andrew, yes. that's 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 phenomenal because I find that most people, when they're trying to figure something out, do not know the proper terminology to G GTS, as you say. Totally. You know, when, when 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 they're doing that, and they would never find out encode like you mentioned the word encoding, right? So, so there's certain keywords. If you're not, if you don't know what to search for in terms of what of what you're looking for all you're going to get is ads because that's what google does i mean there's nothing bad about it there's nothing right about it and that's when a community such as i just you know like like uh if if you're in the business world and you're a ceo like a vistage or a um a young uh, uh ypo YPO. YPO. yeah you, you know, all these things and then there's also tech groups like join these Yes, it may cost you a bit of money to get into some. I mean, I know there's tons of free things, too, and else like that. But when you have some some confidential stuff or you want to get involved with the with a peer group on, on a similar level uh, and stuff like that, you may need to put a little skin in the game. But it's one of the most valuable things that you can do when you're starting out. I don't know if you feel the same way, Brian, or you too, Andrew, but I'd love to get your feedback just real quick. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, 100%. I think, you know, really with anything, technology aside, you don't know what you don't know. So the sooner that you can just be comfortable understanding that there is no, you know, stupid or wrong question, however people, you know, like to phrase it, and you just get out there and you just start shooting from the hip, you'll walk away from your first interaction with somebody, you know, with 10 times the knowledge you just had going into that. You know, as simple as Andrew said, you know, with WordPress websites, if you were a small business to trying to get your first website up, you have no idea what your options are. Essentially, back then in the day where WordPress was considered, you know, heavy custom development and, and custom mm -hmm. deployment, uh, unlike the Wix deployments today. So, you know, Andrew, I, I loved your advice on that. And I think, you know, one of the biggest things that I try to leave uh, companies with is that whatever you saw, you know, take place in the last decade, right, the speed in which it took us to go from the first iPhone to the iPhone 14 or 13, whatever we're at now. Right. Uh, you have to understand that over the next two to three years, we're going to pretty much do that same progression again in a quarter of amount of the time, because it's not just the software that's growing. Right. It's the hardware that's growing. It's the communities that are growing, people's adoption and awareness of technology experiences. So there's a lot to come and there's a lot more things that product companies, like you mentioned, Andrew, from third party integrations, right? Don't build what's not core to you. And same for businesses that are implementing their first CRM, right? This isn't eight years ago where you only had three major platform products that are very expensive. You know, there's a lot of solutions out there that are, are the same commercial grade, but, you know, much more cost efficient. And I think that's why we're seeing so many great you know, technology companies grow and come out of the woodwork and grow so fast, you know, um, like Tribute and those alike, because there's a lot more tools and the communities around those tools that just allow new or, you know, traditional smaller businesses to gain completely new competitive advantages. Um, so I'm just curious, you know, on your thoughts on that, Andrew, and, and how that's kind of played into your journey. I mean, you know, one of the things that I, I've been uh, very fortunate to have along the, the way with me is a, a co-founder and CTO. So, you know, I think what I what I've learned as a business owner is that 
I have tried to be really good at what I'm really good at and know where I'm not really good and to find people who I really trust to, to lead in those departments, which is, you know, I'm, I'm not a product CDO, a CEO. I'm not a, a tech CEO or CTO. It's, you know, I'm, I'm a traditional kind of like business minded CEO. And so being able to, to find people who can ask those questions and lead in those places has been kind of uh, really important for me along the way. And, and I mentioned it before, but, you know, again, as many shortcuts as we can take to get this out in the world as quickly as possible. Um, you know, I have no pride about using other tools <laughs> that exist to, uh, to get something out into the world. It's, I want to ultimately have the, the best tribute uh, product in the world, but I don't necessarily need the Nest kind of like backend render engine, right? Like I yes. need to outsource that. Yes. Yes, certainly. No, and I, I think that's a great, you know, takeaway and, um, you know, I think we dove really into Tribute's journey. I think what we can try to pry you for, since we know you just came out of your holiday party and, and end of year planning for the next year is, you know, what does Tribute's journey look like coming up? What are some of your, you know, guys' main focuses and, you know, what you'd love to achieve kind of as we head into the next year? Yeah, so we, we just had a great write-up in, uh, in NPR uh, today, and it was, it was uh, talking about the launch of Hallmark's video card product. And I think that really like what you're seeing in the realm of digital greetings and people using video technology to share meaningful messages, yeah. gifts, uh, that that's just getting started. And so uh, we're only at the beginning of, of how prevalent that's going to become for day-to-day -day lives. And I think the tributes really establish itself as the, the premier provider of group videos. And now we're, we're getting ready to launch a new product in the new year. And so we're, we're very excited about being able to launch something that allows our users to engage in this act of sharing their love, their appreciation more consistently um, to really build community, do this as a frequent action. And, um, you know, I, I love the Stephen Covey quote. It says like, we are not what we do. We are what we do consistently. And so now what we're doing with, with six years of knowledge under our belt is saying, okay, well, we know why this is meaningful. We know why this is challenging. How do we create a lighter version of this that people can use more frequently with more people in their lives more consistently? And uh, we're really excited to put that in the world and then, um, you know, give Hallmark a, a run of their money to be the preeminent organization, helping people to spread love and, and give important messages on uh, special occasions. Absolutely love that. Good, yeah, man. you're 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 going to do that without a doubt. I'll give you a quick example. Um, so obviously, everyone knows. I think it's Shutterfly, right? The the place we all get the holiday cards from and stuff like that. Is that? Is, I, I know there's a couple of them. Boutique do a phenomenal job. On the other hand, I have CVS that I can easily, <laughs> and I love both. Right? I'm just giving you. I'm just giving you a real life story here. That 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 yeah. just 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 to kind of give you a story of a hallmark versus, versus a tribute. You have someone doing really high quality, super, super intuitive product, easy to use, delivers perfectly every single time. Yeah. Um, and that is Shutterfly with us, with, 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 the, with the actual pictures, right? We know you can pick their stocks, everything else. There's tons of options. With CBS, they're right around the corner. Yeah, we can go do that. But quality is a little bit less. We never know if, it's, if the machine is going to be calibrated, if it's going to work properly. So there is always there is always a spot for for a company to take on a behemoth and be successful. It's there is a spot if you're up for the challenge. I'm not talking to you, Andrew. I'm talking for to, I'm, I'm just talking to the audiences that says if 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 you're a believer in yourself, man. Yeah, listen, these big companies they get they get static, right? And and a and a smaller. Um, company can come in there and just take on huge market segment and you've already you you you've already driven into a lot of that andrew and i hope to see you um continue to drive and and i hope to see you on instagram flying on private jets soon as well i'm <laughs> gonna be watching my feet and i'm gonna follow you right now getting on with your wife <laughs> and dog and kids all dressed in white and everything else getting out of the rolls royce so I mean, I'm more, I'm more the riding on camelback, right? <laughs> <laughs> I got the Egypt you. trip. I got you. <laughs> we'll bring, we'll bring you we along with us. Yeah. There we go. That's awesome. Well, I think, you know, that's a, a great place to, to wrap it. Uh, Andrew, we really, really appreciate your time. Uh, before we go into just, you know, letting you tell everybody where to find Tribute, where to find yourself, um, I did just want to show everybody, um, you know, your guys' website. And more importantly, uh, we'll be putting in um, the 
promo code as well into everything else uh, that we share throughout this upcoming week. So if you guys get a chance, you know, please go to tribute.co. It's extremely easy to get started, create your first tribute, and we are going to be putting a promo code, just utilize incipient. And Andrew, I believe we're going to be focusing on providing one of the do-it-yourself uh, holiday videos, correct? Yeah, we want everyone to experience the magic of uh, giving tribute. So over the next month, think of a family member, friend, coworker who really showed up for you this year and take a, take a day to put together a video, invite some friends and share some of your appreciation for them. And, uh, you know, you'll see how powerful this can be. Exactly. Especially if you're still shopping for Christmas gifts, just leave them all, go home and create a tribute and I love you 10 times more. So Andrew, we really appreciate having you on. Uh, please just take a moment, you know, to make any closing statements you'd like and let everybody know where to follow you in tribute. And yep. we hope to have you on in the future very soon. Great. Well, fellas, thanks so much for the, the great questions and the wide ranging conversation and allowing us to talk about some of the business sides of uh, tribute and then also some of the more kind of mission and thought leadership angles. All of it's really meaningful and interesting to me. So I really enjoyed the chat. And uh, for anyone who wants to follow along my journey or with tribute, uh, tribute is we tribute on all of our major accounts. So LinkedIn, Instagram, uh, Twitter, YouTube. So you can check out all of our best videos on, on YouTube if you want there. Uh, and then for me, my handle is it's Andrew Horn, ITS. And then my name, Andrew Horn, H-O-R-N on all major channels. And, um, you know, a lot of these subjects of communication, human connection, gratitude is primarily what I talk about. But so if this is something that is interesting or meaningful for your personal and professional journey, we'd love to have you along for the ride. Look forward to getting everyone onto the website. And as the year comes to a close, uh, one of our uh, most notable sayings at Tribute is uh, uh, kind of play on words of, we all remember that statement we heard a, a million times growing up, which was, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't, don't say, say it, it at all. all. <laughs> so what we realized is that if you write that statement down and you take out the two don'ts, it becomes, if you have anything nice to say, say it all which I think is a, a much more important statement. And so as the year comes to a close and a lot of people are reflecting about the year behind them, um, I just wanna encourage and invite everyone to take a moment to think about the people who made this year what it was, who were the, the friends who helped you to get through the you know, second wave of the pandemic, who are the family members who might be struggling or who've grown a lot this year that you want to call out? Who are the coworkers who really showed up, who made work what it was this year? Um, that, you know, it's such a, a beautiful opportunity to look back and just to share your appreciation and say, hey, really appreciate you this year. And, you know, we started talking about the definition of, of human connection, but that appreciation is, is a real foundational element of meaningful friendship, uh, connection. And so uh, I think it's one of the most powerful and practical ways for us to reflect on the year behind us is to think about who those important people are. And if you have anything nice to say, say it all. Beautiful. Love that, Andrew. Awesome. Great way to end. Uh, happy holidays and happy new year, Andrew, to you and your family, Brandon, you as well, and everybody in the audience. Uh, Andrew, we look forward to following your journey and hopefully we can have you and your partner, the CTO on uh, sometime next year. Yeah, to man, totally. We'd love to. Awesome. Thanks for the time. Have a great night, guys. All Happy right. holidays. Bye, Brian.